I feel like for the most part SummerSlam did not disappoint. Depends on the way you look at it, the first half was very forgettable but the second half was actually very good. Although this was a disappointment. And the big dog is finally back with new attitude and new teeth. Man it looks weird. I know this is me talking but every time someone replaces their teeth completely it just doesn't look real. But I mean good for the big dog. And is Roman Reigns teasing a heel turn? I'll give you my honest opinion on Roman Reigns' return at the end of the video and you'll probably find it very surprising. Few things before the review. Yeah boy got every prediction right. Yeah, not to brag or anything but I'm just like a wrestling guru you know. Am I super super smart for this? I would say yes. Retribution was nowhere to be found. The most badass WWE faction of all time that broke the same window twice. I mean logically you would try to ruin the biggest party of the summer. But they didn't really care and I don't know why. I've heard they were doing shenanigans elsewhere. Drinking from plastic bottles. And hear me out. This is not over. Not recycling. <gasps> there's, there's no stopping. Who could stop retribution right now? Hi, plastic bottle! And the last thing, the crowd. I feel like it was better than on SmackDown, even though I liked it on SmackDown. Today it was actually a lot more energetic. It seems like WWE allowed these people to do something. It was very entertaining. We got, you know, Pikachu. And people actually gave a crap. Even the sound effects sounded better, it almost felt real. So WWE made me somewhat forget that we're in this situation right now. And by the way, I know I've said I didn't like the fake crowd noise in Edge vs Randy Orton match, but I guess the biggest reason why I didn't like it is because we didn't hear that sound in every other match. So it didn't really make a lot of sense. But all in all, SummerSlam was a roller coaster. Most stuff was actually very forgettable, but a few matches and highlights really stood out. So let's talk about WWE SummerSlam 2020. The first match was Apollo Crews vs MVP on a pre-show. It was actually put on a pre-show uh, a few hours before the pay-per-view. I don't know why, but looking at that match, maybe it was a good idea because nothing really happened. So we got the match. It was decent. I mean, MVP is 46 years old. So, you know, that's pretty good for a 46 year old wrestler. MVP got a new theme song, not quite sure if it's his new theme song or uh, maybe it's the Hurt Business new song because they got new attires and stuff. But anyway, that was an okay match, nothing really special, in which Apollo Crews retains the championship fair and square. I guess the biggest positive of this match and this outcome is that uh, MVP can no longer complain that it was the lights that helped Apollo. He cannot say that no more because he lost after a finisher, no interferences, no glitches, no retribution, like, they were, they were drinking from plastic bottles. <sighs> savages, savages. Uh, so yeah, that was your WWE SummerSlam kickoff show. The actual show kicks off with the SmackDown Women's Championship match, Bayley versus Asuka. So we had two Women's Championship matches in this show, and I wouldn't say that any of these matches were bad, but one of them was so so much better and you probably know which one I'm talking about, the other one. This was not bad by any means but it just felt like your regular Monday Night Raw or Friday Night Smackdown match, it wasn't really anything that special. Not once during this match I felt okay I cannot miss this because this is getting good, unlike with the other match. But I guess it did the job, I mean Bailey retained the championship with the help of Sasha Banks and she's still your Smackdown women's champion. She cheated but she's still a champion. The only question after this match was can Sasha do the same? But of course I'm a wrestling guru, I know what's up because I predicted every match so I was like okay dude Sasha's gonna, Sasha's gonna lose. And I was right. Raw Tag Team Championship match, the Street Profits versus Andrade and Angel Garza, probably the least interesting match of the night. I wouldn't say it was bad, but it was something I've seen many times before and it was hard to care for me because I really don't care about this rivalry. I don't know what it is about this rivalry, I just don't care and I think the Street Profits are one of the longest reigning tag team champions since the 2016 post-draft era. I've read that on Instagram 
And so far, I don't remember anything about their championship title reign except for a lot of terrible segments with the Viking Raiders. Anyway, it was your typical Monday Night Raw match. Not a bad tag team match, but like I've said, something I've seen many times before. And of course, the Street Profits retained the championships. I gotta say though, that was a very good looking finish. And I don't really think this rivalry is over. I mean, she tried to poison the guy. That is a crime. That is a crime. And I believe we will get Bianca Belair versus Zelina Vega. Something I'm actually pretty interested in. I mean, Zelina Vega is actually a good wrestler. So maybe she should be a wrestler instead of just being a manager. So that is a match that I want to see. It's probably going to happen at WWE Payback this month. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Mandy Rose versus Sonya Deville was honestly, people, a disappointment. Appointment. So we got Mandy Rose with a new look, Sonya Deville looking like an absolute badass. I gotta be honest, it had that big match feel. I was very excited about this match. It was also no disqualification match, loser leaves WWE. I mean, what's not to get excited about? Well, the match itself was kinda crappy in my opinion for a no disqualification match. It did have a few good spots, like that chair spot twice. That was actually pretty awesome. Everything else was just... Nah. And of course, Mandy Rose won the match, and Sonya Deville's WWE career is no more. So, I don't know what's gonna happen, we all know why Sonya Deville is leaving WWE, probably wants to take a break from being a public figure because of what's happening in the stupid world. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it right here, but it, it kinda sucks because she improved a lot. So... If she's leaving WWE, it wouldn't make any sense for her to return in a couple of months. So probably she's taking a year-long break. Uh, maybe returning at the Royal Rumble. That would be actually pretty fun. Maybe even winning the Royal Rumble. Would that be awesome? I mean, she improved a lot. That's the biggest takeaway. And I like her facial expressions, her promos. And I, I, I really like her. Seth Rollins versus Dominic Mysterio lived up to the expectations and probably surpassed them. It was a street fight in which we saw Dominic Mysterio, Seth Rollins in the ring, and we saw Rey Mysterio and Buddy Murphy watching the match closely. At first, we didn't get any interferences. It was actually a very good match. Dominic's in-ring skills are pretty impressive. Of course, then we got stuff like kendo sticks. We got Buddy Murphy interfering. We got Dominic's mom. We got Rey Mysterio. We got this big brawl. We got a bunch of cool spots. I mean, it could possibly be the match of the night. It was that good. A very impressive Dominic debut. They put uh, handcuffs on Rey Mysterio. We got a curb stomp, and that's how Seth Rollins won the match. He left the key. Did I say that I called every match? Just, just checking if you remember. But Dominic Mysterio losing didn't really matter. What's important is that he had an amazing debut match. And you can see that Rey Mysterio is very proud of his son. Both of them were crying. And it was a pretty emotional moment. Turns out Armijo is actually a very good wrestler. And I mean, payback is happening in like a week. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're getting a rematch. And this time Dominic is gonna win. Or maybe it's gonna be a tag team match. I don't know. Is Rey Mysterio cleared? Dude doesn't have an eye. I don't know, we'll see. One thing's for sure, it has to end with Dominic Mysterio winning or joining Seth Rollins. I don't know if he should join at this point, like turning on your father. That's effed up, man. I don't know. Asuka vs. Sasha Banks was a very good match. So much better than Bayley vs. Asuka. The chemistry between these two is absolutely unbelievable. The best uh, part about this match is that it took me only like a couple of minutes to get invested into it because so much happened, a lot of great spots, just two women giving you their all. And this whole Sasha and Bailey story is developing even more because Bailey accidentally helped Asuka to win the Raw Women's Championship and Sasha Banks is not very happy about it. I mean, she tried to help, but at the end of the day, it's wrestling. So this is the story right here. Like I've said, a very good match, so much better than the other one. And honestly, there were three matches that really stood out tonight. So it was uh, Dominic Mysterio versus Seth Rollins. It was this match. And of course, Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. Which is the match we're gonna talk about right now. So this was, man, like I've said, a very stressful match. Because we all wanted Drew McIntyre to retain. Like, dude, like I've said, I'm the biggest Randy Orton fan in the world. I don't want Randy Orton to take the championship from Drew McIntyre. So I was really nervous during this match. And I like the story being told, like, in Rey Mysterio versus Dominic match, it was basically just a big 
movie, whatever. It was basically a lot of storytelling. In this one, yes, but a different way. So it was just two tyrants, two of the strongest WWE superstars battling it out. At first, they didn't even commit to being in a ring. Uh, a very good match, very physical match, very old school looking, classic, good match if that makes any sense you get the point you probably watched the match a lot of people were disappointed with the finish i'm not and i'll explain why anyway so we got this match we got you know a lot of orkyo attempts we got claymore attempts we got future shock we got blood we got all sorts of things in this match but they couldn't get it done the vibe of this match was so awesome man you're nervous about it but you're also witnessing a very good physical match in the middle of the ring that was awesome that might be the match. I don't know. Three good matches, actually. But it ended in a controversial way. I wouldn't call it a controversial way, but wrestling fans are weird. So Drew McIntyre retains the championship barely, and Randy Orton is not looking weak. Obviously, we are going to get a rematch, and this is what people need to understand. We just saw a great match. Yes, it ended with... It, is it a roll-up? Not You get the point. But that means we're getting another one. And in the second one, we're probably getting a normal finish. Either Randy taking the championship or Drew McIntyre winning the match with a Claymore or whatever. So I don't see a big issue. I really want to see a rematch because it was really, really good. If Drew McIntyre beat Randy Orton with a Claymore, I wouldn't want to see a second match. Because then it's like, okay, you just lost. One, two, three. We get it. Drew McIntyre is stronger. Let's move on. I would still care it was a good match. But right now, it's even more interesting. And I'm even more nervous right now because now it means Randy Orton can really take the championship. I don't know about you guys, but I was really enjoying that one. The Fiend Bray Wyatt versus the Monster Braun Strowman, on the other hand, was a complete opposite. So, a lot of stuff happened in this match, but at the same time, I barely remember anything. So, it was a false count anywhere match, really hyping it up, you know, big expectations. It's the Fiend. What can happen in a false count, false count Anywhere match? Dude, everything. Well, nothing really happened. We got them fighting in that Vince McMahon office that he always sits in during 24-7 documentaries. Then they got back into the ring. We got the ring being opened. And yeah, Bray Wyatt wins the championship, which is good. But I don't know how to explain this feeling. So you're like watching this and you expect something big. They tear down the ring and you're like, okay, something is happening. And nothing really happened, they just didn't move on it. As I was expecting something more, because it's The Fiend. Magic. Magic? Anyone? Stuff he does? No? I was expecting a lot more, and then once he won the championship, on one hand I'm like, okay, Fiend is the champion. On the other, was that really the match? Was it really that bad? I've seen people saying it was good. I don't think it was, I, I think it was one of the worst matches of the night. It was really boring. So... But I'm happy that The Fiend won. And even though the match sucked, you know, what happened after it was awesome. So we got Roman Reigns out of nowhere with a spear, brand new look, muscles, new set of teeth. Which took me a while to realize that it's the teeth because his face looked different. Anyway, so Roman Reigns returns, Pierce, Bray Wyatt. We got a bunch of chair shots to Strowman, Wyatt, and Roman Reigns was acting ruthless. He was vicious. That was not the same Roman Reigns we saw before leaving the WWE. The message was clear. This is Roman's WWE Championship, he won the title, and he's back. He also had his Stone Cold Steve Austin rip-off t-shirt, so I guess that's what WWE are going for. So many people are saying, Roman Reigns just turned heel. You really expect that, it would be awesome, but you really expect that. It's just gonna be Roman Reigns being a babyface, but not a boring babyface. He's probably gonna stay being friends with all the good guys when we see six-man tag team matches every week. But he's gonna act like a badass. He's not gonna smile, no suffering succotash. This Roman Reigns is not gonna care about anyone's feelings, he just wants the championship. And I mean, that's the closest thing to a heel turn we will probably ever get, you know? So, I'm actually excited. A lot of people, oh my god, The Fiend's career is over. The Fiend is over. No! We didn't even see the match. And like I've said, lately, I'm enjoying these kind of matches, you know, these stressful matches. So Bray Wyatt versus Roman Reigns, dude, that's, wow, I want to see that match. And hopefully it's going to happen at Payback. I really doubt it. 
but I really want to see it. And it could end in many ways. It doesn't necessarily mean that the Fiend could, you know, be buried. And who else could challenge the Fiend for the Universal Championship right now? Do you really want to see the Fiend versus Braun Strowman again? No, Roman Reigns is the biggest challenger. This is a WrestleMania-worthy match. Yes, it would suck if the Fiend would lose, but it really depends on Roman Reigns' booking. Do you honestly hate Roman Reigns? Like, if this guy is being booked correctly, do you honestly don't like him? He's a decent wrestler. I know my expectations are a bit too high, but I'm just saying from what I've seen on SummerSlam, this new Roman Reigns persona is actually very interesting. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What is your favorite match and how do you feel about Roman Reigns returning to the WWE and wanting the Universal Championship? The Great One, peace, love and hugs. It's been a pleasure.